Good morning and welcome to today's yin yoga for the hips. I just realized I have a fly buzzing around the room so hopefully it's not too distressing for you. Little sounds always feel so loud to me when I'm recording. So for today's yin yoga practice you need to gather as many props as you can find. So I would recommend having a bolster or creating a bolster by getting a thick blanket and rolling it up. I have a couple folded blankets, one that I'm sitting on and one a little thicker next to me. I've got a pillow, a couple yoga blocks. Go ahead and grab whatever you can find to help support you. So part of the yin yoga practice is allowing the muscles to completely relax so that the work moves into the joints. We're working on bringing health and mobility to the joints, and today we're really gonna focus on the hips. So we will also get benefit in other areas of the body. So before we begin, I'm gonna do a quick recap on some yin yoga principles. So the first is that you come into the, each pose to an appropriate depth, and an appropriate depth for you is determined by you, but it's somewhere between the beginning of sensation and pain. You don't want any pain. So if there's pain, sharp, electrical, tingling pain, you want to adjust or come out of the pose immediately. So you don't want to stay through pain. But you want to find a sensation that's comfortable to hold for three minutes, but not so comfortable that you're at complete ease. We really grow when we find our edge, and that edge is determined by you, and you'll learn it through practice. So the first thing we'll do in each pose is come into the pose to a comfortable or appropriate depth, and then we'll make sure that we're well supported with whatever props that we need. Then we will resolve to remain still, and we'll hold each pose for three minutes. Now, if three minutes is too long for you, listen to your body, come out of the pose early if you need to, no problem. And the last is we always come out of the yin yoga poses slowly. And then we do a little bit of a counter movement. So we're not quickly sitting up out of a forward fold, but moving nice and slowly. And I will cue you to move slowly so you can just follow along with me and you should be all right. And the next is for a lot of people, yin yoga is a very meditative practice. And you can decide what you want to do with your mind during the three minute holds. And I've got some options for you, but you can pick something else, of course. So the first would be to connect with your breath and imagine that you're sending your breath to wherever you're feeling the sensation the most in any given pose. So you might determine to do that for today's practice. Or you can dedicate your practice to a particular person or cause and direct your attention there during your three minutes. The third is to watch your thoughts. So you can just observe where your thoughts go. Allow them to flow as they will and simply observe them. And the final option that I have for a suggestion is especially for people who are triggered by silence. So if you kind of get a panic or intense fear um, or are really triggered by periods of silence, I'd recommend putting on some music in the background. And if that isn't enough, you can even um, put on an audiobook or even have the TV on in the background so that your mind can be focused on the music or the book or the TV um, and your body can still get the benefits. So you choose which of those options is best for you for today. All right. So yin yoga for the hips, we are going to begin with the pose that I said last week is the pose that if you only have one pose to practice each day, practice this one and that is the butterfly. It benefits not just your hips but also your back and other areas of your body too. So we're doing a long butterfly for yin yoga. So we're not bringing the heels in close to the sitting bones but moving the feet away from the inner thigh and the sitting bones. Now bring your toes together, your soles of your feet together, and you can support your knees with blocks or pillows. You can also, I rolled up my bolster kind of thin. If you have a th uh, longer bolster, you can slide that bolster underneath your knees. 
You could also put a bolster on top of your feet and rest your chin there if you can get that far. <laughs> you can also put it on top of your thighs and allow yourself to fold forward. If you don't want to fold forward at all, you can put your feet up a wall and bring your sitting bones in toward the wall. Or you can also put some supports behind you and allow yourself to recline backwards. All right, so remember today we're focusing on the hips, so you might feel some sensation, you probably will, in your back, but we're really focusing on getting that in the hips. So find that place that's an appropriate depth for you where your knees feel supported and where you're getting some sensation in your hips. And I will go ahead and start the three minute timer. And I will mostly stay quiet during these three minutes to allow you to focus on whatever meditative practice you've chosen for today. Now you can go ahead and use your hands to slowly push the floor away from you to come back up into a neutral spine. You can place your hands behind your back, lift your chest, you can place your feet flat on the ground and do a gentle windshield wiper, slowly moving your knees from side to side. Good. And we'll prepare to come next into straddle pose. So you've got, again, lots of options for the straddle pose. Your legs can be here as far apart as you'd like them to be. You can be sitting up on a blanket like I am, or you can 
be flat on your mat. And you can just place your hands on the ground in front of you and allow your back to round and your chin to fall. And you can be right here. You can also stick yoga blocks under your thighs. This is good if you have a little less mobility in your hamstrings and allow yourself to roll forward. You can put blocks in front of your legs and rest your elbows on the blocks, one or two blocks. You can use a bolster. So you can play with that. You can even put your feet flat on the ground. Kind of push your knees open with your elbows. And maybe rest your hands on blocks. Find a forward pose of in straddle, forward fold in straddle that works for you. And remember, we're really focusing on the hips. So find a place where you're feeling sensation in your hips that's not too deep that it moves into pain, but where you are feeling some sensation. And we'll prepare to hold for time as we start our three minute timer. We'll go ahead and come out of straddle the same way we came out of butterfly. So slowly press the floor away from you with your hands. You can bring your hands behind your back, lift your chest, bring your feet a little closer together and allow your knees to do a little windshield wiper. Nice. 
And the next pose we will prepare for is shoelace pose. So lots of options for shoelace pose as well. So you can start with the right foot extended straight out in front and take the left leg and cross it over, working your knees toward one another, but they may not quite get there and that's completely fine. And you can put your hands out to your side and sit up. You can also allow yourself to fold forward and you can use bolsters, of course, to help support your chest so your muscles can relax. And if you'd like, you can take this right foot that's extended and actually cross it in towards your left sitting bone and allow your knees to closely, mine don't get there, but closely stack over each other. But you want to be really careful here not to allow deep sensation in the knees. So taking, if you're choosing the two knee bent option, you can put a blanket underneath your bottom knee as a way to support yourself. You can also twist toward the top leg a little bit, which can be a nice option for pregnancy, as well as leaning just a little bit over to the right. So those are some options for shoelace. And if all of those options are too deep for your knees, you can always go back in to butterfly. Or even extend one leg out and bend the other and do a half drag and fly. But if you're able to find a variation of shoelace that works for you, it's a good way to get into the hip. Go ahead and arrive there now and I'll start a three minute timer.
Very nice. And to come out of this pose, we'll keep the leg bent at first. Place the hands behind you and lift the chest like we've been doing in those other poses. Release the hips and then slowly you can straighten the legs out in front of you. Maybe you want to do a little windshield wiper again. Good. Now we'll start with the left leg straight and cross the right over. So you can stay in this pose right here and you can still take walks or pillows and stick it under that right knee to give you some support. You can fold forward if you've got space. Again, maybe taking the bolster underneath your chest. Or if you would like, and it's not too much pressure for your knees, you can go ahead and bend that left knee, bringing the left heel into your right sitting bone. And then if you want to support your knees a little bit, you can put a folded blanket or a block or something underneath that left knee. You can sit back in this position. It's a good option for pregnancy. Or twist a little bit to the left. Or if you'd like, you can fold forward here. So I will go ahead and start the timer for this pose and we'll hold for three minutes. Very nice. Go ahead and place your hands behind you, lifting your chest. And then slowly 
bring your legs to straight. You can rest here for a moment, or if it's like you can bend your legs and do that gentle windshield wiper. Now this next pose we're going to do is Dragon Pose, and Dragon Pose requires a little bit more strength, so just hold it as long as feels okay to you. If your muscles are starting to fatigue, you can come out of it early. So for Dragon Pose, we'll start with both shins on a folded blanket, kind of in a tabletop position. And I really recommend at least starting with this variation and then you can adjust, maybe another option. Put blocks, or toilet paper or books or whatever you've got underneath your arms and we're going to take the right hand, right foot forward between the blocks and you can heel toe that right foot closer to the right block and then scooch that left knee back and allow the hips to sink forward. This is your first option. Another option would be, and this is good for pregnancy, to tuck the toe, come up a little bit higher, and place a hand, your left hand on a block and your right hand on your right thigh. If you want to move deeper into this pose, you can heel toe the right foot to the side, maybe put a block or two to the left of your right foot and bring your elbows and forearms down to the blocks or even all the way down to the ground. And I'll show you one more variation for this pose and then you can go ahead and find one that you like for today. With your blocks on the left side of your foot, you can allow this right knee to fall, you can see, fall back behind you so that you're on the right side of your foot and that gives you a little bit of a deeper stretch into a different part of the hip. Now another option for these three minutes would be to stay in one variation for the first minute and a half and then switch to a different variation for the second minute and a half. So I'm going to let you know when we're at a minute and a half in case you want to make an adjustment. So go ahead and find the dragon that works for you, and we'll start the clock. So we're at a minute and a half, so you can stay where you are if you'd like. Or if you want to tuck your toe and lift your knee a little bit, relieve that knee, but also a little bit more strength required for this one. Or maybe bring both blocks to the left side and open your knee, whatever you'd like to do.
And from here, you can go ahead and slowly move into a tabletop position. And from there, you can come back into child's pose, bringing the knees wide, the toes together, hinging back in the hips. Or if you'd like, you can go into a downward facing dog, lifting your hips up and back. Then we'll come back into tabletop and we'll do the other side. So this time we'll bring the left foot between the hands after we put our hands up on the balls. Bring the left foot between the hands, scoot that right knee back so you're getting a nice stretch in the hips. And make sure your knee doesn't go past your ankle here. You can stay here, you can come back and place your left elbow on your thigh and your right hand on a higher block. A little bit of a gentler option. You can come back as far as you need to. You can bring both blocks to the right of your foot and bring your elbows down to the blocks. Or you can allow that left knee to fall to the left coming up onto the side of your left foot. You can also, if you want to start with that raised knee version with the right leg straight and be in more of a strength pose, that works too. So find the pose you're going to use for the first half of the timer. And I'll go ahead and start it and I'll let you know when we're halfway through. We're halfway through, so you can stay, and you can make any adjustments that you'd like. And we'll hold for that last minute and a half.
And now slowly work your way back into tabletop. And then you can choose whether you'd like to go into child's pose or down the dog or something else that feels good. pose we're going to take before we go into our resting pose, just using my reference book to make sure I offer you as many variations as possible, is happy baby pose. You'll work your way to lying flat on your back, then you can take it in the traditional manner with your knees wide and hold on to the back and sides of your feet, pulling your knees toward the ground, or you can hold on to the back of your legs. You can also do this on a wall, pushing your hips toward the wall and letting your legs bend against the wall with your hands out. And then the last option I'll offer you for this one is to put the soles of your feet together and hold on to the back of your legs bringing your heels in close. So go ahead and find your happy baby pose. And we'll start the three minute timer. If you're pregnant, you don't want to hold this one for too long. We're at two minutes, so you can slowly come out of it and move into your shavasana, probably lying on your left side with pillows between your knees, maybe a folded blanket or a pillow under your head. Everybody else, we've got about a minute left.
and slowly allow the soles of your feet to find their way back to the ground. Take a few breaths with your legs bent here. If you'd like, you can press into your feet and lift your hips a couple of times. And then we'll set up for our Shavasana, a resting pose. You can take the knees together and the heels wide, with the palms facing up. Or you can straighten the legs, maybe putting a rolled up blanket underneath your knees to allow a little bit of a bend in the legs. Walk the shoulder blades together. If you'd like, you can allow your eyes to close. Allow your breathing to be smooth and steady. Once you find a pose that's pretty comfortable, stop making any adjustments and just allow yourself to be. Taking those slow, smooth, steady breaths. Perhaps even allowing your mind to slow down a little bit. And we'll stay in Shavasana for three minutes. And I'll bring us out with the crystal singing bowl. When you hear the sound, you can move your attention to its sound. And as it begins to fade away, we'll work our way to a comfortable seat. So we'll go ahead and start our timer now.
You can begin to bring some gentle movement into your fingers and toes. Allow your eyes to softly open. You can bring your knees into your chest, rolling over onto one side, pressing through the palms of your hands to move slowly to come back to a comfortable seated position. Now your hips may feel a little bit fragile for a little while, that's completely normal. We've stressed the hips and now we need to allow them time to become stronger and more mobile and return to neutral. So move carefully, um, especially for the next half an hour, but just listen to your body and don't resume any vigorous activity until your body feels ready. Make sure you drink plenty of water and I encourage you this week if you can, to try to do at least the butterfly pose for three to five minutes every day. You can do that in the morning or in the evening, um, but that's a really great pose for your hips and your back, and you can begin to slowly begin, begin to begin, be <laughs> slowly build mobility and health and those really important joints. So thank you so much for practicing yin yoga for the hips with me today, and I look forward to practicing with you again soon. Bye.